Welcome to episode 2 of The Sims 4 Fire Habitat. Before we start off, I'm going to say if you enjoy this video, then please share the love and expand our army, or if you liked the last video or whatever. But let's get started. In um, the last episode, something was wrong with my recording. I don't know what it was, but there was a weird crackling noise. Hopefully it isn't here in this episode, but we're starting on the wonderful face of Grayson. Blaze, I just forgot his name for a second, but it's okay. Grayson Blaze, and we're, yes, in his bathroom. We were uh, stalking him a little bit because um, that's what simmers do. We watch sims in their most intimate moments. And I'm gonna um, carry on play, so I went ahead and played off camera for a bit because, why did I do that? Well, because the plans weren't done and it was gonna be boring if you guys kinda just stayed and watched that for the past few days, grow the plants. But it's okay because the plants are up there, like, I mean, harvested, harvesting in harvest season. And um, we can kind of get things underway. So we can start doing a bit of that, and I just want to quickly show you a few things. So I got kind of his wood, war, ha, ha, no, what's it called? Uh, handiness! We got his handiness skill up. So we got him to go ahead and craft a few things here, and got his skill up. And then downstairs, he does have a new mirror. So we did that for him, and the others don't because, I mean, come on, it's the builder. Obviously, he's going to have a bit more of an upgrade in his house because he has the ability to build things, and I feel like that disparity should be there. And uh, did anything else? Oh, yeah, and he made this small kind of garden pot, which is adorable. He can plant things in there, but I'm just kind of keeping it over here. It's uh, Obviously, he owns it, but he is not going to plant anything in it as of yet because I feel like whatever he has is okay for the job. So, is everyone okay? Everyone seems to be fine enough for us to actually get Marcel to harvest a few things and start getting her skill up. So, is, yep, we've got the basil. Basil? I think basil. Yep. That just sounds better. I'm gonna just go with that. So we have every, you know what? We're not gonna harvest everything. We're not. I actually, and also on the note of harvesting, I got a really good idea from Mr. Coffeehead in the first episode. And he said, why don't you change kind of the, I think he said the chances or possibility of harvest or how much harvest you have, depending on the season. Obviously you can only do this when seasons comes out, but that uh, sounds like a really fun thing to go ahead and... Real Remedy, yep. It sounds like a fun thing you can go ahead and experiment with. And I think that would be super fun because it would add a bit more kind of realism. And Mr. Coffeehead did say that he liked the kind of survival realism aspect of this, you know, series, whatever it is. It's not a challenge. At least yet it isn't. And, uh, ooh, why is she sparkling? Maybe because this lot has the traits? Hmm, yes. Oh, she, she feels that way too. Okay, and so um, I replied to him saying that maybe, like that gave me a really good idea, and I thought maybe what we can do is when Seasons comes out, we can have like kind of chances so I can randomize what, like whether a crop gives harvest or not. So pretty much like the chances of harvest being there, you know, I don't want to make it too complicated, but I feel like that would be kind of fun. It's just enough. So it's fine. So how it would work is, for example, right now we're going to pretend it's summer and spring or whatever. It's summer. We're going to pretend it's summer. So we're going to have eternal summer in this LP until seasons comes out and then we will have seasons, of course. But how it's going to work is normally you would harvest all, but we're not going to do that because we don't want to waste harvest. So, and also, we just want to use the stuff we need, okay? Yeah, great, capiche. So that's going to work, is when Seasons comes out, um, summer and spring might have like 100% harvest rate, and then autumn might be 60%. So for example, if we wanted to harvest parsley, then we're going to go ahead and do harvest. But before we do that, we're going to have to kind of 
roll a randomizer, I'm thinking, or something like that. And that because there's a 60% chance in autumn, um, then if, or fall or whatever, if kind of um, we roll, say, a 61 out of 100, then that means that that harvest was a failure or it died or something negative happened to it. And so when we harvest that single kind of plant, we're going to have to get rid of all the harvest we get from it because, you know, it wasn't within the 60% range. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. That was a long rant. I apologize, but let me know what you think about that idea or if you have maybe um, anything else you can add to it or something like that. Okay, where did that thing go? Where did the thing that you make go? Insect repellent, nice. So we are gonna, ooh, look at that. That looks so cool. It's gonna be super fun once we start having more things to put on the shelf. And obviously she needs to get her herbalism skill up and she can make that because we don't have her firefly. Damn it. Gosh, damn it. It's, yeah, tea, whatever you're saying. But that's fine, that's fine. And I also want him to go ahead and build some stuff. Please, sis, build some stuff. Let's craft, hmm, a bar stool. Why not? What? No, 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 no. Actually, I want sculpture. Let's do an elephant sculpture because elephants are fun. Yes. My best friend is obsessed with elephants. I Not as much as she used to, but still kind of. Okay. Let's um, get Monique because I think the cookies are about... You know what? We'll wait for her to finish those cookies. When it goes out, then we'll get her to bake something new. But actually, you know what I think I want? I think Grayson is going to, you know what? This bunny sculpture, I think he's going to make it. And then he's going to exchange the bunny sculpture, kind of like trade that for some baked goods. So when he's done with that, whenever that happens, then we can kind of get Monique to go on and we're going to start this bartering system. Jeez, I can't, I can't talk. I keep saying buttering. Bartering system. And then, yeah get that on the way and also we got Marisol to kind of play around with this tree here and we kind of unlocked this secret passage and now she can go to what's it called uh Sylvan Glade there we go she can go there and it's so so pretty honest to god it is so pretty everything is pink and just amazing and I think I want the others to kind of start getting access to that as well so I might get them to kind of go and you know, interact with this tree a little bit. And also, I want to kind of start building relationships. And over the past few days of me playing them, not really forcing this, but just them interacting by themselves, Marisol and um, Monique have actually become friends. And Marisol and Grayson are pretty okay acquaintances, but they're not too close. Like, in general, Grayson isn't that close to ladies because he's been spending a lot of his time kind of indoors and... Um, making things and getting his skill up and kind of just doing what he needs to do not necessarily you know trying to make friends whereas the ladies i mean i don't know if that says anything about ladies but they just love chatting it up and talking about things and gossiping obviously there's not much to gossip about because we don't have a huge community as of yet but it is quite fun for them so that's pretty exciting and i like that i don't know what type of personalities i want them to have yet if you guys have any ideas feel free to put them down in the comments below and i will appreciate that heaps and I don't know but I feel like Grayson's gonna be a little bit like his personality Ooh, he's done okay elephant is done now that the elephant is done he's gonna go and they're so attracted to marshmallows and yes just because they don't get food sometimes from the baker doesn't mean they will die because they can make marshmallows and not only that veggie dogs and a hot dog so they can pretty much survive off this kind of um fire pit here so that's fine but it's kind of like um you know, they indulge in all these baked goods if they can afford it, that kind of thing. So he's got the elephant sculpture. Now I think that's going to be enough for an entire kind of um, platter of baked goods. So I'm going to get Monique. Oh, she's hungry. You know what? I'll get her to eat first because I don't want her to eat um, whatever she makes. So we'll get her to eat first. And then when she's done, I'm going to get her to go ahead and actually bake a platter of something for him, maybe brownies or something like that. We'll see. Make something for him. And he doesn't have a fridge, so that means he's going to have to keep, um, you know, as much as thing. And then if that goes off, then that goes off, unfortunately. He's going to have to check it away. That's how it works. But, yeah, 
that's how it works. And look at these lovely plants. Everything's already here. Unfortunately, we can't use everything yet because um, Monique still needs to get her skill up. But look at these trees. The planting tree still needs to grow up a bit. But um, super exciting. Everything is kind of just coming to life and it's absolutely fabulous. Also, what was I saying? I was talking about Grayson's personality. Now, I think Grayson is going to be kind of like a very reserved character. I mean, yeah, I'm not making a story so much out of it, but, you know, things develop while you play The Sims. And so, I don't know, he just seems to me like a very reserved character, does what needs to be done. And he's going to be, when eventually, he's a cheerful and perfectionist, yes. Perfectionist is why he spends a lot of his time indoors, kind of honing himself and his skills, and trying to improve his home especially, I feel like. And cheerful, I mean, when he does meet people, he does have a very nice personality, but it's just that he prefers to, you know, refine his state of living or whatever. He's also a cat lover, so I feel like whenever we get that fire spirit we so desperately want, then um, he's going to be quite close to it. He's going to spend lots of time with it. And I removed the cat bowl that we had here, the pet bowl or whatever, because I feel like, I mean, I don't know if this is going to work. We'll have to see once the fire spirit comes. But I was kind of feeling that they could, you know, feed them, like take turns feeding the cat throughout the day type thing, because then at least that would guarantee some sort of interaction. And also um, it wouldn't, the fire spirit wouldn't just be left to one corner as kind of an extra part. And oh, look at him. He's joking it up with my soul. Look at him go. He's not that close to her. So it's nice to see that he's talking to her a little bit. And... Um, getting to know her a bit. I wonder what he's talking about. Maybe his, oh look, the fire spirit is already talking about the fire spirit. I think he's quite excited to see when this fire spirit comes, what it's going to look like. And I don't know, if you guys actually have a myth you can create around the fire spirit, that'd be so cool. Because right now, I'm calling them the kind of dragon bloods. Their species is the dragon bloods. So it would be super fun to see what you guys come up with in terms of myths. So what do you think is kind of the mythology behind the fire spirit. We don't have it yet, but if, I mean, if you want, you could use that as an influence to the fire spirit you create, but I think that'd be awesome. And she's coming out here. She, oh yeah, you can bake. Please, 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 please. Um, why don't you go ahead and bake some stuff? Ooh, she can bake more stuff now. How fun. Let's go bake some, hmm. Do I want brownies or cookies? You know what, we want brownies. She's going to go ahead, oh, oh, fire, jeez, please don't get burnt. We're going to go ahead and make some brownies and give it over to the builder because the builder has something, a bit of decoration he wants to kind of exchange for this thing. And also, I'm thinking, um, I don't know if this would be a good idea, but maybe because the builder is kind of the one in charge of, you know, decoration and those kind of things, what if... He was the one who kind of bought a lot of things as well. Like, not only things you can make, but things from outside kind of the woodworking skill or whatever. I mean, the hidden skill. And things outside of things you can make at the woodworking table and stuff. What if he, like, you know, from, like, build and buy mode? What if he was someone who could buy all these things? Okay. This is the complication we had last time. Just take it out here and then resume. And then hopefully it'll work. Okay. Yeah, so what if he does that? He like purchases all this stuff, kind of like, he's like a merchant as well. That'd be cool. He could be the builder and the merchant. And so if he like, if someone wants something, he'll have to buy it. And then they have to trade kind of that for one of their resources. I feel like that'd be a pretty fun idea to do things. So for example, like these ladies, if we go into build and buy mode to decorate their homes, they can't just, okay. This is what we're going to do, okay? We are going to open this up and give it over. Actually, no. I'm going to put this in her inventory. Okay, it's 8. Yep, I mean, it's 9. It's late, but you know what? Go and talk about cooking. Tell them that the brownies are done, and then we can do the exchange. But I'm thinking, yeah, the decorations. So, like, they can go into Marisol, and uh, Monique can't go into build and buy mode and get something and then, you know, put it in their thing. They actually have to, uh, what you may call it, like they, from what I'm thinking, they actually have to go through the builder. So Grayson will be able to buy whatever he wants from build and buy mode 
and then he can exchange it with the other people. So if they want a decoration, they're going to have to tell it. I feel like that would be a pretty fun idea. And maybe different people can have different things that they can have in their homes. Hmm, that would be fun. But right now, I'm thinking that's the way we're going to do things. Okay, great. They've talked it out. Now we're going to hand over the goods, exchange the goods. So he has the brownies, and she has the elephant sculpture. And I don't know where she's going to put this, because she doesn't exactly have anywhere to put it. Hmm, where can she put her elephant sculpture? Yeah, she doesn't, see what I mean? She doesn't have anywhere to put it. So, what does she need? She needs a, a shelf or a fireplace or something like that. But I don't know how we are going to do it. And oh my god, what about, what about for expansions you need? And also, I hope that crackling noise isn't happening again. If it is, then I apologize. I really don't know what's wrong. Um, I don't know. I'll, if it's still here, then I'll try and fix it later on. But anyways, like for the next part. But what was I saying? Yeah, what if when they like have expansions in their houses and stuff, like someone who's not the builder, obviously, but they have to kind of like, I don't know, pay the builder. Like what kind of bartering system could be used for that? I mean, like not bartering, like what would the metrics be? Like how much of what resource would we have to give to get that done? Because I think that would be an awesome idea. And now everyone's pushing out. I mean, up, pushing up on the ground. Nice. Okay. I think that would be super cool. So, like, if they need expansions done, maybe they have to have a certain amount of relationship with the builder. And maybe the relationship can determine how much of a resource it costs for them to get stuff done and made. Hmm. Let me know your opinions on that. I feel like that's pretty fun. Okay, Marisol is off to bed. Isn't she tired? Apparently not. Um, okay, sweet. She's not tired. And why is he having... You have baked goods, darling. How long do these... Uh, 22 hours? Oh, geez. Okay, yeah, 22 hours. So that's cool. But why are you having that? You can literally eat your baked brownies. You have baked brownies, you know. You can eat that. So I am just going to pop this over on the table so he can get them whenever he wants. And then when it goes off, it goes off. And that's the end of it. And look at her. See, so you don't need baked goods. You can survive on hot dogs for the rest of your life. But, I mean, let's be honest. Who wants to eat hot dogs for the rest of their life? I'm sure you wouldn't want to. You'd want a bit of variety, you know. And also, I was quite worried about the fact that because they're having a lot of baked goods, that's going to mean that their waistlines expand really quickly. But that doesn't really have to be an issue if you're not too fussy about whether or not your sims are healthy. But uh, then again, I feel like if they're only eating when they're hungry, then that should kind of help out a bit. And maybe we can send them jo- Ooh! Maybe as like an exercise routine, so many ideas and inspiration. But what about, since we can go to Sylvan Glade, I mean the others can't, but once they get access to it, what, what if that's kind of like their training ground thing? I don't know if it's going to work there, like if you can send them jogging and stuff, but what if kind of like, Every once in a while, everyone kind of goes to Sylvan Glade and they have a bit of a session where everyone's jogging, they're playing, they're spending time talking to each other and building relationships. I think that would be pretty fun because be over here, everyone's kind of like in their own zone. Whereas in Sylvan Glade, that's kind of like, you know, where the um, dragon bloods go to kind of have fun, build relationships away from all the chaos and distractions of this world. Because all you can do there, and also to get fish. So all you can do there is pretty much fish, and uh, I think that's it. So not much to do. Harvest a few things, collect a few things, and then fish. And I think that's that will be a pretty fun spot for them to go jogging and do those kind of things. You know what, I'm going to get her to go to sleep. I think we should wrap up the part right here. Um, thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this part. And, um, yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.